Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to the video. It's another paid request. It's time for Jonathan. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. It could be a topic, review, commentary, tier list, what have you. But Jonathan wanted me to talk about the film Eight Below from 2006. Now, it was directed by Frank Marshall, which I've liked decent amount of films he's done whether it be Arachnophobia, Congo, Alive I would say I like those more than this but this was a decent one as well so yeah Frank Marshall did not direct a lot of movies but the movies he's done each one I've seen I've at least liked or loved now this one it's based on a story from 1958, an event that happened in Japan. Well, they had these 15 dogs. Two of them survived, Maya and Max. And this is then they had done a film based on that event. I forget what the film was called. Now, of course, this is from Disney, so... It's not going to be killing 13 fucking dogs on screen. This time there's 8 dogs and 6 of them survive instead of 15 dogs and 2 of them survive. So, which I'm fine with. I don't need a whole lot of dogs dying. But the, the movie itself here takes place at the Antarctic Research Base. And you got Paul Walker. May he rest in peace. Um, Paul Walker is one of those guys that when I first saw him... I didn't think much of him. I'm like, okay, who's this pretty boy? And, you know, what's he going to do? But I warmed up to him. He did the first Fast and Furious. I did like the sequel, Too Fast, Too Furious. I saw it in the theater. Uh, hours, I still think, is his best movie, his best performance. Very underrated film. That's the one where his wife gives birth but dies in childbirth. The baby has to be in this incubator. But then these floods happen and people have to leave. But he stays there because they can't move the baby. Because it's connected to all this equipment. If they shut it off, the life support will be gone. So he stays there with his baby. He's trying to get help. Great movie. Again, criminally underrated. I even like Vehicle 19, which a lot of people didn't, but I thought it was interesting. It was a film that takes place inside a car, and I thought it was it was a damn it, but it was an interesting damn it to me. I did not mind Brick Mansions, which was a remake, but I didn't mind that film either. So, I was really curious to see what he would do next, and then that tragic accident... And he wasn't even driving, it was someone else driving, and just a fucking shame. So he's in this, I thought he did a nice job, he leads these dogs, he leads dog sledding to where people need to go, in this case is Bruce Greenwood, who I've seen, he did a lot of TV shows that Sally, they didn't go anywhere, I shouldn't say Sally because I haven't seen them, but I think there was one called Nowhere Man, and some other TV shows that kind of came and went very quickly he popped up in a few movies probably most well known in those Jar Jar Abram movies of Star Trek he played I believe uh, I believe he played Pike because I know he played the mentor the Captain Kirk in the first 2009 Star Trek film he has come to this research base because he needs someone to take them to this area where there's meteorites, maybe. So ultimately, Paul Walker does it. Among the other people, you have Moon Bloodgood. She kind of becomes a bit of a love interest for Paul Walker. Uh, Jason Biggs, he's a comic relief, of course, from American Pie. And Paul Walker takes Bruce Greenwood. Bruce gets his meteorite piece, but he's not paying attention. He falls. The dogs save his life, but he's got a bit of, he, you know, he's in the Arctic, he's in the cold, he's wet. They got to really rush it over there. We got to get this guy out of here because he may have some bad frostbite. Even you, Paul Walker, may have some bad frostbite. 
We need to get you guys the fuck out of there. What about the dogs? Oh, you know what? Tomorrow or the next day, we'll come back for the dogs. So Paul Walker doesn't want to leave, but he does. And then when he gets there and heals up, realizes that it's too late. As in the planes won't go there because of the storms. So the storms aren't going to pass over, I guess, until the summer or whatever. I'm like, is that how it works? That's a, but I guess that's how it works. That, you know, for months they won't go there. I'm like, there's not consistent storms. But I guess it's just some type of safety thing. At least the way they say it in the movie. Never been to the Arctic, so I'll take their word for it. <laughs> and then the story is that these dogs have to try to figure out what to do. They're tied up. They're chained up. They have to get the hell out of it, and then they got to try to survive. Now, I don't think the movie needed to be two hours long. I, do, I think it does feel a tad over long. But as, as much as I like Paul Walker, the human stuff really wasn't that interesting. It's pretty much Paul tries to get help. He's told, no, you can't. Then he tries to get help from Bruce Greenwood. But then he says no. And then he kind of accepts it and tries to work some other jobs. And that's pretty much it. Uh, toss a moon blood good for a bit. Bruce Greenwood gets an award. He sees a picture that his kid drew. But the dogs are saved by daddy. And then he has some grant money left over and then he gets to Paul Walker and hey gets Jason Biggs and the girl and let's go find your dogs as that really your surge they pretty much just get there they wait for like five minutes and then remarkably with the best timing ever that's when the dogs have come back and again they only were there for like five minutes so is that even them searching and where we want to search around the Arctic this whole fucking area. No, they just had to wait for five minutes and then didn't, thankfully. I just the dogs heard vehicles nearby. Which you think they've been well over a hundred days. So you think they would have gone very, very far away. But I guess not. So I said the human stuff really wasn't the most interesting part of the movie. It's more like, oh, I like that actor. I'm glad to see him in there. <clears throat> it's not like them fighting every tooth and nail to search and find these dogs. What makes the film work are the dogs themselves and the way they were trained. Very good job on the trainers on this. The dogs have their kind of unique looks. You have the older one, kind of Maya. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember what the real dogs. Does Maya and Max were the dogs in this movie? I'm trying to see who were the dogs in Eight Below. The like, what were their actual names? The two that survived. Sorry. Tis in the dogs, you have Maya the leader. You have Max the younger one. Which, his eyes are a little bit more distinct. That's why I was able to recognize him compared to the others. I don't know how else to put it, but his eyes seem a bit more distinct than the others. And I mean, I know the picture's there, but if you look over here, like, this right here I can tell is Max, because his eyes seem a bit more distinct compared with the others. The others, there's a little bit more warmer color. Here, there's just a little bit more to the eyes, so that's Max. Now, the actual two dogs, Taro, and Jiro. 
Seven were still chained up and dead. Six were on our counter of four. Okay. And the Jap the the Japanese film was called Antarctica. Nineteen eighty three film. Okay, just want to get that info. But yeah, you have this uh, dog named Old Jack, who's the oldest of them. Yeah, these two that are kind of what Malamutes, I believe Paul Walker called them. Um, and then again, you have the leader Maya. You have the youngest one Max. And let's see, each one. I want to say each one has their distinct personality. That wouldn't be true. But I will admit, there's a part of me that kind of wish the entire movie was just from their point of view. I think that would have been, number one, a shorter movie. I think it would have been a more tighter paced movie. And honestly, that was something that was more interesting of what's going on with the dogs. Like, they're still chained up after 15 days and they find these burrs and they grab them. Uh, one tries to pull the older one named Old Jack out, but. He's kind of just accepting his fate. And like I said, the trainers did a great job. Like, you have one licking the other's head in sorrow. Like, I'm sorry that you have to go through this. I'm sorry that I gotta leave you here. And they give a, a bit of humanity to these dogs that really make some nice emotional quality moments out of the picture like there's another one where they see the northern lights and some of them are playing around but one slips off the edge and falls and the dogs kind of stay there huddled with him and staying with him and then you get the idea that during the night when the snow is over them they get out and one died during he died during the night and this one that Paul Walker said they kind of liked each other. It has these sorrow-filled whines and is licked in. Without words. Just from noises, from the way the, the trainers utilize these dogs. You get some nice emotion and sadness out of that scene. And the youngest, Max, maybe the most optimistic, still stays there for longer and says no I can't leave him like thank god they didn't try to do they didn't turn this into we hear the dogs talk whether we see their lips move or by mental telepathy we hear them talk thank god they didn't do that cuz I see another producer say we need to do that we need to hear what they're talking thank god they didn't do that cuz you you know what they're saying without them having to say it Based on their actions, based on the sound design of the wines and the the licks. And, you know. Like I said, very commendable for what they were able to, to do with these dogs. Uh, there's a bit where there's this seal, massive seal, that attacks. And Max, the younger one, has to get it away. So the other dogs are going to feed on this other animal that's been killed. I mean, I would say that's kind of all that we see happen. Because, again, it's them getting birds. Uh, the death of the two. The, the seal bit. And during it, the leader Maya gets her leg hurt. And, again, that's kind of all that we see and, I mean, that doesn't feel like a lot for two hours. Because, but you gotta take it into account. There's the build-up where we establish the base, we establish who the dogs are, we establish Bruce Greenwood, we establish uh, the inciting event, and that will take, you know, 30 minutes or so. I say it's all the stuff with Paul Walker and... What he's doing where he's not really doing anything. Try just having to accept it and not liking it. And 
it's just not that interesting the human element and again the fact that they come back and then they're there and they think oh my god the dolls didn't even get out of the chains and they see one old jack but then the others are free and then they kind of look around i'm like it's been how many days a hundred or so days do you think they're just around there apparently they were because they heard saw whatever and how could it be that they didn't have to do a whole lot of fucking searching? They didn't have to... The humans didn't have to do a whole lot of fucking work. So... If I was a Dawes, I'd be still pissed at them. If I was the Dawes, I'm waiting for the Dawes to go up and attack and... <laughs> That'd be a different movie. The Dawes come up and Paul Walker's like, Hey, how's it going? Jason Biggs, hey, how's it going? I need some pie. I need some human pie and eats Jason Biggs' junk. Just like he did that pie. Well, he fucked the pie. Maybe the dog fucks him like the pie. But he needs a poontane pie. And your ass looks like a poontane to me. But again, the I think Frey Marshall, who has a hand in this in survival stories with Alive. I don't think the movie needed to be two hours. I think it could have been cut down. I think... I hate to say we could have used a lot less of the human stuff later on. Because it just really wasn't that interesting. It's kind of... I just... Just to keep the audience in mind that they... That Paul Walker's still worried about them. But that, that's really all it does. And then ultimately Bruce Greenwood changes his mind. I get the importance of that, but I, don't know, I just, I can't say it was that interesting. The dogs, again, they go through a couple hurdles, but like I said, it's deep in birds, northern lights where the one then dies, seal. That's pretty much it. There's, I mean, maybe if there were more of... Like them having to go over this ice or dealing with other animals, whether it be penguins or other stuff in the Arctic. Maybe there's other hurdles, other events, other issues they have to deal with. I don't know. So like I said, it was a decent film. It's not a film I probably would rewatch much, but like I said, the, the best part of it is the way the dog trainers utilize these dogs. They're beautiful looking dogs. The fact that you can convey sincere emotion from the dogs and from the death of two of them and just how they... Those are the most effective bits in the movie. So by the end, you're glad that they're safe and sound and... Makes it a sweet enough ending. Again, I'm glad they didn't know what the real life events were. Again, 13 dogs were dead and only two survived. That would have been even more depressing. But at the same time, they didn't make it where all of the dogs lived. You had to have at least one or two die to show the seriousness of these events. Did I just see someone else going, no, don't kill anybody. Just like they get hurt or close calls, but they all make it out. And I was like, well, we gotta have at least one or two die because, and then we gotta show how seriousness this is, and there are dire circumstances. So, I appreciate them not pussying out all the way. So, like I said, I less of the human stuff, more dog hurdles to overcome, but again. They shot well with the environments they utilized. The Mass of Seal, I, that looked really good. I'm, I'm guessing that was a special effect. If that was a real seal, I mean, that looked really neat. That, that big-ass seal. I mean, now that I think about it, I don't know if it was an effect or not. Well, I guess it was an effect, to be honest. I mean... You see the mouth and stuff, but. Yeah. 
And I see the effect. So yeah, it was an effect. Stan Winston Digital. The Leopard Seal. So. See, so, yeah, I mean, when I see still pictures, yeah, it, it is an effect. But nicely done. I appreciate they went for more practical. And it was a massive motherfucker, too. So I do appreciate that. Let's see if we get a picture of it. Yeah, this guy there. I thought that was a really nice looking effect. I thought the way it moved was pretty good too. I didn't feel too stiff. So. I thought that was pretty pretty neat to see. I thought that was nicely done. And then the dolls going up and you know, you have to be careful. And that's another thing is that this is utilizing real dogs. Nowadays, it'd be like all digital dogs, like that Harrison Ford movie. What the fuck was that one called? I know I keep looking at my phone. The Harrison Ford movie that no one remembers. Because <laughs> it did nothing. And it was all like a CGI dog. I don't remember what the fuck that... That just popped in my head. Call of the Wild. 2020. We're alive, it was like a fucking CGI dog. <sighs> Shit. Here, I appreciate utilizing the real dogs, and again, that was the, the best part of the movie for me. And despite my issue, what I said about the human cast, I Paul Walker, greatly missed. Still nice to see him in there. Bruce Greenwood, good actor. Jason Biggs was all right. Bit of comic relief, but not too annoying, not too irritating. But after the initial beginning bits, he only pops up like probably three more times until you know the two or three until the finale. So he's not too irritating. Moon Blood Good is, is there, and they really care if they try to have a relationship or not. That was a really an intriguing part of the movie to me. But the dogs were the star, and they maybe it would have been nice if the other dogs they had a little bit more to them to differentiate where. I don't know if they had certain personalities or they had certain. Just really like the Dawes I think of is again the leader, the little one Max, then the ones that died. The other ones, I couldn't really, really tell you anything about them. Maybe that's a way to do that to be more realistic, but at the same time, you know, is that. I can't tell you much about the other dogs because there's not much really. Even the movie itself did with the other dogs. But I'm rambling. I'm going over the place. Overall, I thought it was a decent film. I didn't mind it. A little bit long, long in the tooth, just like this review. But pretty decent overall. So, with that said, thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys later. Bye bye.